This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Supergirl wasn't the first woman to don the tights on TV. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got More Free Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So after a long absence, we have a superheroine show on primetime US TV, Supergirl. It has been a very long time. Yes. As this airs, the second episode has now come out. We were impressed with the pilot, got into the action and the costume quickly, yes. which was a problem with the other shows, I think. Yes. It wasn't dark and depressing, also mm-hmm. a problem with some of the other shows. We're looking at you, Arrow. Ben was, was really born for the role, I think. <laughs> she seems to fit it very well. Yeah. Uh, of course, the hardcore comic book fans don't seem to be as impressed. Well, they're really not following comic book continuity as usual no. with some of these right. TV that's, shows. Right, that's how it normally so, is. Yeah. But of course, Supergirl is hardly the first show with a superheroine lead. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about those. Mm-hmm. Some rules I've put in place, so we'll be talking forever. Yes. Live action TV only. Uh-huh. Must have actual powers, either intrinsic or with gadgets. Yes. No spies, so that gets... Emma Peel is out because she did not have superpowers. Right, Honey West. Yeah. (laughs) So, no. And must be the lead as opposed to just a team member. So, really, the ones that appeared on, like, Smallville don't count. Right. Yes. Now, I'm going to bend that rule for the first entry, and that's Batgirl, (laughs) 1967. And she was introduced for the third season of the Adam West Batman series. It really added to save the series, but that ship had already, already sailed. sailed yeah. It was played, of course, by the recently departed Yvonne Craig. Mm-hmm. There's a 10-minute introductory film designed to show the executives how the character would work. And one thing they really stressed was, well, a, a girl shouldn't be punching. So she's kicking, and she, she does a lot of kicking on Did the show. Did she ever not punch on the show? She never punched on the show. Wow, I never noticed she that. Just pun- she just kicks. Huh, <laughs> that's interesting. And Killer Moth was the villain in this introductory film, mm-hmm. just like her comic book intro, which was also in 1967. They didn't exactly match up, mm-hmm. but but they, they kind of borrowed from each other. Yeah. And the character is Barbara Gordon, the librarian daughter of Commissioner Gordon. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Batman producers also created a five-minute pilot that never aired of a Wonder Woman series that year. Now, is that supposed to be a camp series like this Absolutely. One? And it was played by Ellie Wood Walker, and it was really being played for laughs like a sitcom. Huh. She lived with her mother, and her mother's like, well, why can't you just settle down and marry instead of being a superhero? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Hippolyta. And, and there's a series, and there's a, a sequence where she is looking at herself in the mirror, and there's another actress who I'm blanking on right now, but she played the girl in the Planet of the Apes movies. Okay. <laughs> And so that's who she sees in the mirror. So she's not all that beautiful in real life. Ah. <laughs> ha. Yeah. Really weird and never really went anywhere at all. So we then skip all the way to 1974, mm-hmm. where Wonder Woman returns, this time with Kathy Lee Crosby. What? Yeah. Kathy Lee Crosby? <laughs> yeah. A TV movie intended as a backdoor pilot into a series. Mm-hmm. She looked nothing like Wonder Woman, more like a track and field runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, a ridiculous plot that involved Ricardo Montalban and code books. She had no real powers. Well, then what's the point of being Wonder Woman? Exactly. It, I, I equate this to the Halle Berry Catwoman movie. Okay. <laughs> where it's like, we have the name of the character, throw everything else out. Yes. <laughs> so they tried it again in 1975 with the Wonder Woman series, Yay. the Linda Carter series. Mm-hmm. Of course, perfect for the role. Yes. Much, much closer to the comic book. Mm-hmm. It ran three seasons, one at ABC, and was set in the 1940s, where she's in the Army. And it decided to be too expensive for the network, because it mm-hmm. was a period show. I mean, when you do a period show, you've got to, nope, modern cars, everybody's got to be in costume. Mm-hmm. It's very expensive to do a series like that. 
And then they did two seasons at CBS, then set in 1970, mm -hmm. where she's a spy working for the IADC, the Interagency Defense Command. Now, her character is immortal, so she's it's the same character in both series. But it's they don't same quite person. explain how... They kind of do, actually. Okay. Because there's a reference to the fact that Lyle Wagner played both Steve Trevor Sr. and Jr., in the two series, and there's a reference to that. <laughs> so she's essentially immortal, so it's like, yeah, it's the same character, that's fine. Yes. Carter's portrayal was so enduring, it's taken 40 years to try it again for the upcoming movie, if, if that ever happens. It even happens, yes. <laughs> and of course, TV is nothing if not repetitive, so we got a whole group of shows around this time. Yeah, so they were all trying to kind of ape the success of Wonder Woman. Right, starting with Mighty Isis in 1975, a Saturday morning show produced by Filmation, and this was kind of partnered with the Shazam series. Right. Uh, played by Andrea Thomas. She was a school teacher with a magic amulet. She could use poetry to like initiate the powers. It was the cheapest show short of public access. But it was so good. I loved Isis. Okay, I didn't watch it all that often, but it was pretty good. 1976, The Bionic Woman, a spinoff of The Six Million Dollar Man. And she has power, so she counts. Exactly. Introduced in a backdoor pilot, mm -hmm. Jamie Summers, played by Lindsay Wagner, and just like Steve Austin, was turned into a cyborg without their approval. Well, she played um, a tennis player who was yes. Steve Austin's girlfriend. Exactly. And then she got horribly injured in, in one of his missions. Skydiving accident. Oh, skydiving accident. Yes. And, and he made her... You have to fix her. Fix her. And you so they did. <laughs> yeah. Now, she apparently died during his series, but that was just a cover-up. And when she comes back, Jamie has amnesia about Steve, conveniently, mm -hmm. and she ends up working for the Office of Scientific Intelligence, the OSI, as a spy, mm -hmm. as Steve did. Yes. But somehow kept separate so that Steve didn't know. Yes. She had a bionic ear, a bionic arm, and bionic legs. Mm -hmm. And they later introduced a bionic dog mm -hmm. in the last season, Max. Yep. <laughs> she reappeared in the TV bionic movies in the 80s and 90s. I think she and Steve eventually got together yes. and had little bionic babies yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, 1976. Another Saturday morning show produced by Sid and Marty Croft of H.R. Puff and Stuff and Lidsville. Deidre Hall, who of course later went on to Days, Days of, of Our, Our Lives, Lives yes. and Judy Strangus played the heroes. They had these electrocomps bracelets that gave them powers, mm -hmm. which apparently rarely worked, it seemed like. It took campiness to a whole other level than even more than the Adam West series. There was an attempted remake in 2001 with Marky Post in the lead, and a more, much more cynical view of the character. You can find it on YouTube. It's, it's like, wow, <laughs> she's like an alcoholic, and and she's sleeping around, and, it's, it's, and she's living in a trailer. Definitely not a Saturday morning show. Though. No. And then earlier this year, a web series was announced, but I can't find any evidence that it actually happened. Okay. Like two YouTube stars said, we're going to do that again. And uh, no, yeah. Who knows? I think yeah. it's just a publicity stunt. The Greatest American Heroine. 1986, an attempted pilot sequel to Greatest American Hero that ran from 81 to 83, played by Mary Ellen Stewart. And the idea is this alien suit gives you superpowers. Yes. Mm -hmm. We got a few female heroines in the 90s, like Xena and Buffy, but I wouldn't really consider them to be superheroes, per se. I don't know. Se. Buffy, you know, she had powers. Yeah. She was the chosen one. Right. All right, I'll yeah, yeah, but, you know, it, 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 it's so far away from superhero, yeah. it seems like. It's like more like a dark, uh, dark hero. Right. I don't know. And speaking of dark heroes, Dark Angel, in 2000, was an early role for Jessica Alba, who plays a genetically enhanced super soldier on the run in 2009, post-apocalyptic Seattle. Now, I really liked this series. Yeah, we liked this show. It also featured um, Michael Weatherly. Yep, who went on to who went NCIS. Went on to NCIS fame, yes. James Cameron did the pilot. He produced the show. It cost $10 million for the pilot. It lasted two seasons. Black Scorpion, 2001. Sci-fi channel series from Roger Corman. It starred Michelle Lintel 
As a police detective who moonlighted as a vigilante hero, Corman really emphasized the sexy costumes on the show. She had no powers, just gadgets and a supercar. <laughs> but she had tights, so she counts as a superhero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Adam West and Frank Gorshin, of course, both from the 60s Batman series, got roles as villains at one point. It was actually based on a couple softcore movies that were made in the 90s. <laughs> Witchblade, 2001, a TNT series based on Image's comic book series. Police detective played by Yancey Butler who finds this ancient blade that gives her powers and magic armor that, at least in the comic, leaves little to the imagination. <laughs> it was supposedly canceled because Butler went into rehab. For it, magic use? Apparently. I don't know. <laughs> well, she... Uh, they say it was TNT's highest rated show when it was canceled. Wow. So it must have been because of that. Birds of Prey, 2002, based on DC's comic book series. And again, I really liked this show, at mm -hmm. least in one of its various incarnations. They changed the, they seemed to change it up several times, didn't they? Well, it was only 13 episodes. Yeah, but they kept changing people. <laughs> yeah. It was set in a near future Gotham where Batman is gone, leaving a city defended by. Oracle, Barbara Gordon, played by Dina Meyer. Mm -hmm. Huntress, Helena Kyle, played by Ashley Scott, who is the daughter of Batman and Catwoman. So it's almost like an Earth 2. In a way. Dinah Lance, who is the daughter of Black Canary, and played by Rachel Scarston. And as I mentioned, only 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. A Bionic Woman remake with Michelle Ryan in 2007 mm -hmm. really never took off. No. I mean, there were several episodes, but it, it did terribly in the ratings. Yeah. David Kelly produced a truly horrid Wonder Woman pilot in 2011 with Adrian Palicki, who's now on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that is available online in various places yes. if you want to watch it, but it really was not very good. <laughs> there, there's a scene where she's fighting this guy or coming up against this goon in a, in a hallway. She picks up this huge metal bar and impales him, killing him instantly. She was never in danger. Nobody was in danger. She just killed him. Yeah. yeah. So now we have both a Supergirl and a Jessica Jones series coming from Netflix with Kristen Ritter starring, which looks very, very, very dark. Yes, and, and you would expect that to be based on what we've seen already from, from this... Dare, Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're also getting Legends of Tomorrow this January, which is an, an Arrow slash Flash spinoff on the CW... There are multiple female heroes and heroines in that show. Yes, so we'll have to see how that goes and how much of a lead they take. Right. So we're looking forward to watching that, at least mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>